sitting with a group of people, perhaps you're in a work meeting with colleagues or a dinner party with friends. You're listening and thinking, and maybe you're not saying much, but you are engaged in the conversations happening around you. When suddenly someone turns to you and says, are you okay? How come you never say anything? Why are you so quiet? Now some of you will have no idea what I'm talking about because you've never experienced this before. To you, words just come easy and you have no hesitation in speaking up. But for some people, finding the right words to say and the courage to speak up doesn't always come easy. And that's been my experience. And when you always hear these words being said to you, you start to believe that speaking up is the only way to contribute and to be heard. And being confronted for being quiet and challenged to speak up and always falling short of this can start to leave you with a sense that you failed as a colleague or a team member or even as a friend. And so to justify this, we might start to identify ourselves with certain words or labels. I'm just quiet because I'm shy or I'm an introvert. I'm Asian, I'm a woman. And within these words, we start to shape our lives. I'll give you one example. I chose to enter a profession that I thought would be perfect for an introvert. I became a veterinarian. I imagined that I would spend my days tucked away inside a vet clinic, doing surgeries and caring for sick animals in hospital. And it's interesting that a lot of vets do identify as being introverts, and they'll say they chose to enter the profession over human medicine because they much prefer dealing with animals rather than people. But it turns out that being a vet is all about dealing with people <laughs> because the animals don't talk. In general practice, vets consult all day, which means speaking to pet owners, getting a history, discussing medical conditions and treatment plans, delivering good news and bad news, and dealing with all the human emotions that can arise. Early on in my vet career, I felt that consults were something I had to endure just to get to the real parts of being a vet, which was the medicine, the diagnostics and the surgeries. So one day I had this consult booked in for me. It was my last consult of the day and it was for a diabetic cat. Now diabetes is a really tricky disease to understand and to treat, so there's a lot to cover in a consult. So throughout this day, I spent uh, my spare moments uh, reading up on the disease and planning what I had to say. But to be honest, I spent the whole day just dreading this consult and wishing I'd been scheduled on to do surgery instead. So the end of the day arrives and it's time for this consult. I walk into the room and I meet Tom, an old cat. And as I'm watching Tom walk around the room, I realise there's something really wrong. Because instead of walking around on his little feet like a normal cat, he's dropped down on his back hocks. His disease had progressed to the stage that he had diabetic neuropathy. So at this point, I knew this was going to be a really tricky consult. So I took a deep breath and I'm about to launch into this diabetes speech that I spent all day preparing when Tom's owner reaches down and picks up a basket. She puts it on the table and one by one she starts pulling out these pills and containers full of, um, sorry, these bottles and containers full of pills and supplements. And she shows me this stack of papers full of scientific evidence of how these medications are going to treat Tom's diabetes. So I'm watching all of this unfold, um, but the whole time I'm just rehearsing in my head the words that I want to say, and I'm trying to find the right moment to speak up. And the whole time I can just feel the minutes ticking by. Um, sorry. And then she pulls out a notebook, and she shows me, it's full of dates and her daily observations of Tom. Uh, his meal times, his insulin doses, his glucose readings from urine samples. And all of a sudden, it hits me. 
I suddenly realised just how invested this owner was in her pet's healthcare. She had done all this research. She could easily have decided to manage Tom's diabetes at home by herself. But she chose to book a consult, to speak to a vet, because at the end of the day, all she wanted was what was best for her cat. With this realisation, I felt something shift inside of me and I stopped thinking about the words that I wanted to say and I just listened. And as I listened, I heard her say many things. I heard her hopes, I heard her concerns, I even heard her hesitance in sharing all of this with me for fear of being judged. I hardly said anything in this consult and at the end, Tom's owner thanked me. She said she had been to see several different vets before me, but I was the first one who actually listened. In this case, it wasn't the words that I didn't say or my inability to speak up that the owner noticed, but it was my quietness in listening that spoke to her the loudest. From that day on, she continued to bring Tom to see me, and as we worked together, we saw his symptoms improve over time. As I've grown as a vet, I have learned an important lesson as an introvert, and that is that we shouldn't hide away from the things that we're afraid of or that we think we're not good at, because we do have important contributions to make, and we have our own ways of making them. So I decided to stop hiding behind my idea of being an introvert, someone who's afraid to speak to people. And once I embraced my quiet personality, I found I was actually able to enjoy what I do best. In general practice, I do enjoy doing the medicine, the diagnostics and the surgeries. But most of all, I now enjoy consulting, engaging with people, not in a group, but one-on-one. -on -one. In the quiet of the consult room, it's just me and you and your pet. It's where I can listen to your concerns and think about the best way forward. It's about the conversations that we can have and the relationships we can build. Because empowering you to be the best owner and advocate for your pets is just as important as performing a life-saving surgery. And for me, the human connections and relationships that I've made through being a vet have been deeply fulfilling because I live and work in a country town. When I first moved to regional Victoria, people said to me, you know, it may not be a good idea to live in the same town that you work. Imagine being recognised everywhere you go, people knowing your ins and outs, maybe even stopping you on the street to ask for veterinary advice. I mean, how terrifying does all of this sound to an introvert? <laughs> I could have tried to play it safe and lived in a town separate to where I work. But then I would have missed out on being able to call this wonderful town of Malden my home, where I have felt welcomed and embraced as the local vet. And it's where I have found my voice by being able to write a column in the local newspaper, where I've been able to educate not only my clients, but anyone who happens to read it. And sometimes people do stop me in the street and they don't say, they don't ask for veterinary advice. Instead they say, I really enjoy reading your vet column and I don't even have pets. <laughs> <laughs> so through writing, I have found another way to contribute and to be heard. We all have our words that we choose to define ourselves. I am quiet, introvert, Asian, woman. These words, they can define us, but they should never limit us. And if we embrace them, they can empower us. The reason I'm here today is to invite you to embrace quiet. I have shared my story with you so that the next time you find yourself sitting with a group of people and you notice the person next to you hasn't said anything for a while, rather than say to them, why are you so quiet? You'll be able to embrace their quietness and appreciate 
that in that quiet, they are listening and thinking and they are engaged. And if you are a quiet person, embrace it. Remember that speaking up is not the only way to contribute and to be heard. There are so many other ways. Listening, empathising or writing, just to name a few. Lean into your strengths and be empowered by who you are. Because once you embrace your quiet, you can speak volumes. Thank you.